Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video, I want to show you one thing that's really important when it comes to dealing with WordPress, and that's the speed in which your site loads. Now, WordPress is an incredibly powerful piece of software with tons and tons of great themes and add-ons and plugins and a whole range of things that you can do to make it really, really powerful. One of the downsides is it can tend to get a little slow. So what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks that you can use to speed up the entire website. Now, while there's no one-size-fits-all solution to speeding up a WordPress website, these different tips and different solutions that I've come across, I've used them today on quite a few different websites to test them out and see if I could find any issues with them. And so far, other than a couple of little quirks, they've all worked flawlessly. They've made a massive increase in the speed of the site loading and the responsiveness of both the admin section and the front end of the website. So without further ado, I'm going to show you these different steps. And like I say, you can use them as and when you want to. So the first tip we're going to take a look at might seem a little daunting to start off with. We're going to be using the cPanel, which is part of the control panel to do with our hosting account. Now, don't worry, you're not going to get into technical code or anything like that. This is all pretty straightforward and you should have access to cPanel or something similar as part of your hosting account. Now, this isn't based on a Windows based server. This is based on a Linux or Unix based server, which is what you'll normally find as the reseller plans. If you're unsure, contact your hosting company and they should be able to help you out and answer any of these questions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up and enable compression. Now what compression is going to do is it's going to take our image files and our HTML files and our PHP files and all those kind of files that make up WordPress and it's going to compress them as it delivers them to the end user which means that it's just going to speed things up because everything's going to be a bit smaller. Now this is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is come down in our cPanel. We're going to scroll down until we find the option that says Optimize Website. Once we click in there, we've got a couple of options available to us. You can see in this instance, we've got Disabled, Compress All Content, Compress the Specified MIME Types. Now for this, for ease, all you need to do is compress all content. So just select that, hit Update Settings, and you'll then find from that point on, your website will start to compress the files that it's delivering to the person that's actually looking at the pages. So you should notice a decent speed increase just by implementing that. So that's the first one. Let's take a look at the next tip that I'm going to show you on how to speed up your website. Okay, so we're going to stay inside the cPanel for this next tip. And this is basically coming down to the version of PHP that you're going to be using to run your copy of WordPress. Now, the most important thing you do at this point is ensure that your website is backed up because if you change this and something goes wrong, you've always got a backup of your website there. But don't worry, it's even simpler than that. If we make a change to the PHP version and we find that we do have inconsistencies or compatibility problems, we can simply turn it back to the version that we knew worked fine and your website should just go back to carrying on working. So this really comes down to any plugins or third-party add-ons or themes that may be a little out of date that haven't been updated in quite some time. They may not be compatible with the latest version of PHP. But to change this, all we need to do is scroll down and we'll find the option that says Multi-PHP Manager. You may have a variation on this, and again, I would say if you're unsure and you can't find what you're looking for, and you're a little bit sort of not too sure what you're going to click on, contact your hosting company and they can tell you exactly what to do. They may even do it for you. Okay, so let's select PHP Manager. And what this is going to do is going to show us the domain or domains that are part of this particular hosting account. And it's going to tell us what version of PHP we're currently running. Now, WordPress should be fine up to the latest version of PHP. If you're unsure, stay with version 7 because we know that works pretty well. So what you've got is it tells you the domain name, tells you the PHP version that's currently running, and then we have a range of different versions that are available. So you can see we could go right the way up to version 7.1, which is the latest version installed on this particular server. And what you're going to get from this is... When you're working with WordPress, it wants the latest version of PHP. It's optimized for the latest version of PHP. And by having an older version, you're going to find that things are going to generally run a little bit slower because it's using deprecated information. So by upgrading to the latest version and making sure your server's running on that latest version, then you're going to make sure that you've got maximum compatibility and you're going to find that your, both your admin section and the front end of your website is generally going to be much snappier, much quicker to work with. So all you need to do to enable a different version is simply select the domain or domains that you want to apply this to, then simply come to the PHP version that you want, select it from the list, 
and click apply. Once you've done that, the server will immediately be updated to use the latest version of PHP that's installed on the server. And like I say, you should then start noticing some improvements in speed. Okay, so these next couple of tips are going to be a little bit more advanced, not in what we're going to do, but how we do them. Now at the moment I'm using Qt FTP, which is an FTP application that allows me to connect to my server and access all the files on there. So this is how I upload my files, my plugins, my themes and so on. There are plenty of free FTP pieces of software out there that you can use and all the details you should need to access your FTP on your website should all be part of your control panel. Again, if you're unsure, contact your hosting company and they can advise you on the best way of accessing your account via FTP. So what we've got is at the moment, this is the root directory and this shows all of the WordPress files, everything we have access to, all the things that make WordPress work. Now for this first step, we're going to access the HT access file. Now this is a file that allows us to do a whole range of different things, both to the website and the server. Now I'm not going to get into detail what's going on here, it's quite a complex file, but what we're going to do is we're going to add one simple block of code, and what this is going to do is it's going to enable browser caching. So what that does is it basically means that once that page is up on the website and you've accessed it and looked at it on your computer through your browser, all the files that are going to be used on all the other pages will be cached, in other words, they're stored on the local computer. And what that does is it means it doesn't have to go to the server to pull those files down every time a new page is accessed. This can make quite considerable speed increases to a website. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable that quite easily. And all the code for this is linked in the description below. You can go and grab that from my website and you can access this and you can just copy and paste this information over. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the HT access file. We're going to edit that. And what that's going to do is you can see we've got a whole range of different things in there. And this is to do with the security plugin that I've got. You may well find that you've got completely different information in there. And if you've got a clean install of WordPress, there's really minimal information in there. The most important thing, though, is to make sure that this block of code sits right at the beginning, the very first item in your HD access file. So let's just copy and paste that information in there. So let's just take a brief look at what this is actually doing. You can see this is about the expiring the caching information. In other words, how long it needs to store those files on the local computer until they need to be refreshed and looked for again. So you can see that we have expires active is switched on. And underneath that, it tells us what files and how long to cache. So you can see that it's telling it to cache image files, both JPEGs and JPEGs, depending on how it's spelt, GIFs or GIFs, PNG files, and so on. It's also storing PDF files, JavaScript, Flash files, and so on. So any files that match that criteria on your website will be cached. And that's going to help speed up the whole process of accessing and viewing the site and all the pages. So like I say, this code is available Links in the description below, go and grab that, copy and paste it in there. Once we save that, you're going to find then that that will start caching the information as soon as it's accessed. Now, one caveat to working with this caching is to make sure that you only do this when your site is ready to go live. Because the problem is, because you're caching this information, if you make changes to a page that's previously been cached, you may not see all the changes because those files have been cached and it's serving the local version, not necessarily the updated version. So bear that in mind. Put this in once you've finished and you're ready to launch your site. Okay, so that's the HD access file all covered. The next thing we're going to do is move on to the functions PHP file. Okay, so the functions PHP file is a very important file when it comes to dealing with your WordPress website. It's important to make sure that you A, have a backup of this before you make changes to it, just in case something goes wrong. However, because we're using FTP to access our files and not doing this through the admin of WordPress, if something does go wrong, we can still access and edit the file. If you did this with the back end of WordPress, if your site goes offline or crashes or has a problem, you're kind of stuck. You can't get access to that file. So this is the method that I would recommend using when you want to make changes to files. So where do we find the functions PHP file? That's pretty straightforward. For this example, we're working with a child theme. So we're going to find a blank functions PHP file inside there we can work with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the WP content folder and we're going to go into the themes folder. And you can see all the themes that I currently have uploaded to this particular site are all listed there. The one I'm interested in is the Ocean WP child theme. So I'm going to open that up and every child theme is going to have at a bare minimum a functions PHP file, a screenshot and a style CSS file. Reason being is when you've got a child theme, 
anything you put in your functions PHP file or anything you put in your styles CSS file is loaded alongside the master theme, even though the master theme is not being used. I'm not going to get into the detail with that. Just know that we can put just additional things into either of these files and they will be added on top of the original source file as the master theme. This means we can make changes and when the theme updates, it doesn't destroy all the changes we make. Okay, so let's open up the functions PHP file. So let's just edit that. Now, depending upon the theme that you have installed, you may find some information in here. You may find it's pretty much blank, other than some sort of like just filler text that tells you what to do and how to do it. So we've got two things we're going to place in this location. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at defer parsing of JavaScript. Sounds quite complicated. But what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that the JavaScript is done at the end not at the beginning, which can slow everything down. Because what will happen is all those files that you're loading at the beginning, they stop it starting to load in the actual content of your page. So if you've got big JavaScript files, for example, then what this is going to do is it's going to wait until the content loads in the browser, and then it's going to add in the JavaScript afterwards and speeds up the whole process of seeing content come on screen. Using this in conjunction with the caching means that all those things, once they're loaded on the first page, will kind of be stored in the browser, so it speeds the entire process up. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this block of code in. I'm simply going to just paste that in underneath. So anything that's already in there, we're going to drop this in at the bottom. So that's the bit of code that says to do what it needs to do, which is to pass the, J the JavaScript. And that's the first thing I want to sort of say. The next thing is, depending upon the theme that you're using, a lot of themes, especially commercial ones, they will put a version at the end of various different scripts. So, for example, if you've got a CSS file being loaded in, and it's a version 1.2, for example, then it'll tag that on at the end. Now, this is information that's not really needed, and all it does is it slows the whole process down. So we can put another little block of code in that what it says is to just get rid of that stuff that we don't really care about and speed up the loading process so again all I'm going to do is copy this information in and we're going to drop that underneath the first block make a bit of space for that and there we go now you can see this is all commented so it tells you which block does what so if you're ever looking at this to make changes afterwards and you want to see which block actually refers to what and you don't understand the code then you've got that little sort of information there now if we save that that's going to start making the changes to the website now, there's one thing I'll draw your attention to, and that is be careful with some of these things that you add in there because they can have detrimental effects. For example, the defer passing of JavaScript, this can, can, can tend to have a bit of an issue when it comes to loading in Google Fonts. You may find that you have a discrepancy in the font that you've actually chosen to what you see on screen. If you do, remove these one at a time, see which is the one that's causing the problem, and if you can't live with it, you can't find a solution to it, then just simply remove that section. With the cache in, you're going to get a benefit anyway. So there's various different benefits and negatives to using these kinds of things. And that's pretty much it. That's what we're going to sort of stay with. Those are the different things that I wanted to show you. And just as an example, I want to show you how quick a page or a site that I've currently been testing this out on actually is to load pages in. So I've been working with OceanWP recently, and I've been working on re sort of building one of my websites to do with the training that we offer, which in this example is the Peacemake TV one. So this is using OceanWP, which is a pretty lightweight theme, but I've also tied it in with the techniques I've just covered in this video. And the one thing you'll find is it's become much more responsive. So for example, if I go to a page, you'll see that once I click on it, the page pretty much loads instantly, and all the images are in there. And if we go to another page, for example, the WooCommerce tutorials, Again, same kind of thing. It's almost instantaneous. I'm on a pretty decent fiber connection, but it's nothing mind-blowing, and I've seen the increase in this considerably. I tested it out today of various different sites I've been working on, on some different speed test sites, and I take it from being pretty mediocre to I got a hand, oh, sorry, 99% on one of the test sites, which I think is quite incredible for the speed that you're actually getting just through making some simple tweaks that I've covered in this video. Well, that's what I wanted to show you, how to speed up your WordPress website in some simple steps. You can just copy exactly what I've done, and then you should see some benefits. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's given you some just different techniques you can use to speed up your website. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content that's added every single week. If you need comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or you'd like to let us know the kind of results that you got through any of these techniques, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.